Hello folks, thanks for joining me. We're going to finally, after about two, maybe three weeks now of procrastination since I was given this to read. Uh, for explanation, you can see my video I made about a week and a half ago called Message to My Friends. Um, yes, I'm finally reading it because it's time. Um, it's past time. I should have read it a couple weeks ago, but anyway, so here we are, Lamentations, the King James Version, and, uh, how doth the city sit solitary that was full of people? How has she become as a widow, she that was great among the nations, and princess among the provinces? How is she become tributary? She weepeth sore in the night, and her tears are on her cheeks. Among all her lovers she hath none to comfort her. All her friends have dealt treacherously with her. They are become her enemies. Judah is gone into captivity because of affliction, and because of great servitude she dwelleth amongst the heathen. She findeth no rest. All her persecutors overtook her between the straits. The ways of Zion do mourn, because none come to the solemn feasts. All her gates are desolate, and her priests sigh. Her virgins are afflicted, and she is in bitterness. Her adversaries are the chief. Her enemies prosper, for the Lord hath afflicted her for the multitude of her transgressions. Her children are gone into captivity before the enemy. And from the daughter of Zion, all her beauty is departed. Her princes are become like hearts that find no pasture, and they are gone without strength before the pursuer. Jerusalem remembered in the days of her affliction and of her miseries all of her pleasant things that she had in the days of old. When her people fell into the hand of the enemy, and none did help her, the adversaries saw her, and did mock at her Sabbaths. Jerusalem hath grievously sinned, therefore she is removed. All that honored her despise her, because they have seen her nakedness. Yea, she sigheth, and turneth backward. Her filthiness is in her skirts, she remembereth not her last end, therefore she came down wonderfully. She had no comforter, O Lord, behold my affliction, for the enemy hath magnified himself. The adversary <clears throat> hath spread out his hand upon all her pleasant things, for she hath seen that the heathen entered into her sanctuary, whom thou didst command that they should not enter into thy congregation. All her people sigh, and they seek bread. They have given her pleasant things, or have given their pleasant things for meat to relieve the soul. See, O Lord, and consider, for I am become vile. Is it nothing to you, all ye that pass by? Behold and see, there are many sorrows like unto my sorrow, which is done unto me, wherewith the Lord hath afflicted me in the day of his fierce anger. From above hath he sent fire into my bones, and it prevaileth against them. He hath spread a net for my feet, he hath turned me back, he hath made me desolate, and faint all the day. The yoke of my transgressions is bound by his hand, they are wreathed, and come up upon my neck. He hath made my strength to fall, the Lord hath delivered me into their hands, from whom I am not able to rise up. The Lord hath trodden under foot all my mighty men in the midst of me. He hath called an assembly against me to crush my young men. The Lord hath trodden the virgin, the daughter of Judah, as in the wine as in a wine press. For these things I weep, mine eye, mine eye runneth down with water, because the comforter that should relieve my soul is far from me. My children are desolate, because the enemy prevail. Zion spreadeth forth her hands, and there is none to comfort her. The Lord hath commanded concerning Jacob that his adversaries should be 
round about him. Jerusalem is as a menstruous woman among them. The Lord is righteous, for I have rebelled against his commandment here. I pray you all people, and behold my sorrow. My virgins and my young men are gone into captivity. I called for my lovers, but they deceived me. My priests and mine elders gave up the ghost in the city, while they sought their meat to relieve their souls. Behold, O Lord, for I am in distress. My bowels are troubled, mine heart is turned within me. For I have grievously rebelled, abroad the sword bereaveth, at home there is as death. They have heard this, and that I sigh, there is none to comfort me. All mine enemies have heard my trouble. They are glad that thou hast done it. Thou wilt bring the day that thou hast called, and they shall be like unto me. Let all their wickedness come before thee, and do unto them as thou hast done unto me for all my transgressions. For my sighs are many, and my heart is faint. How hath the Lord covered the daughter of Zion with a cloud in his anger, and cast down from heaven unto the earth the beauty of Israel, and remembered not his footstool in the day of his anger? The Lord hath swallowed up all the habitations of Jacob, and hath not pitied, hath not thrown down his wrath, the strongholds of the daughter of Judah. He hath brought them down to the ground he hath polluted the kingdom and the princess thereof he hath cut off in his fierce anger all the horn of Israel he hath drawn back his right hand from before the enemy and he burned against Jacob like a flaming fire which devoureth round about he hath bent his bow like an enemy, and he stood with his right hand as an adversary, and slew all that were pleasant to the eye in the tabernacle of the daughter of Zion. He poured out his fury like fire. The Lord was an enemy, or oh, I mean, the Lord was as an enemy. He hath swallowed up Israel, he hath swallowed up all her places. He hath destroyed his strongholds, and hath increased in the daughter of Judah mourning and lamentation. And he hath violently taken away his tabernacle, as if it were a garden. He hath destroyed his places of the assembly. The Lord hath caused the solemn feasts and sabbaths to be forgotten in Zion, and hath despised in the indignation of his anger, the king and the priest. The Lord hath cast off his altar, he hath abhorred his sanctuary, he hath given up into the hand of the enemy the walls of her palaces, they have made a noise in the house of the Lord, as in the day of a solemn feast. The Lord hath purposed to destroy the wall of the daughter of Zion, he hath stretched out a line, he hath not withdrawn his hand from destroying, therefore he made the rampart and the wall to lament, and they languish together. Her gates are sunk into the ground, he hath destroyed and broken her bars, her king and her princes are among the Gentiles, the law is no more, her prophets also find no vision from the Lord. The elders of the daughter of Zion sit upon the ground and keep silence. They have cast up dust upon their heads. They have girded themselves with sackcloth. The virgins of Jerusalem hang down their heads to the ground. Mine eyes do fail with tears. My bowels are troubled. My liver is poured upon the earth for the destruction of the daughter of my people, because the children and the sucklings swoon in the streets of the city. They say to their mothers, Where is corn and wine? When they swooned 
as the wounded in the streets of the city when their soul was poured out into their mother's bosom. What thing shall I take to witness for thee? What thing shall I liken to thee, O daughter of Jerusalem? What shall I equal to thee, that I may comfort thee, O virgin daughter of Zion? For thy breach is great like the sea, who can heal thee? Thy prophets have seen vain and foolish things for thee. They have not discovered thine iniquity, to turn away thy captivity. They have seen for thee false burdens and causes of banishment. All that pass by clap their hands at thee. They hiss and wag their head at the daughter of Jerusalem, saying, Is this the city that men call the perfection of beauty, the joy of the whole earth? All thine enemies have opened their mouth against thee. Thy hiss and gnash the teeth, they say. We have swallowed her up. Certainly this is the day that we looked for. We have found. We have seen it. The Lord hath done that which he has devised. He hath fulfilled his word that he had commanded in the days of old. He had thrown down, and hath not pitied, and he hath caused thine enemy to rejoice over thee. He hath set up the horn of thine adversaries. Their heart cried unto the Lord, O wall of the daughter of Zion, let tears run down like the river, day and night, give thyself no rest, let not the apple of thine eye cease. Arise, cry out in the night, in the beginning of the watches, pour out thine heart like water before the face of the Lord. Lift up thy hands toward him for the life of thy young children, that faint for hunger in the top of every street. Behold, O Lord, and consider to whom thou hast done this. Shall the women eat their fruit, and the children of span long? Shall the priest and the prophet be slain in the sanctuary of the Lord? The young and the old lie on the ground in the streets. My virgins and my young men are fallen by the sword. Thou hast slain them in the day of thine anger. Thou hast killed and not pitied. Thou hast called as a solemn day my terrors round about, so that in the day of the Lord's anger none escaped nor remained. Those that I have swaddled and brought up hath mine enemy consumed. I am the man that hath seen affliction by the rod of his wrath. He hath led me and brought me into darkness, but not into light. Surely against me he has turned. He turneth his hand against me all the day. My flesh and my skin hath he made old. He hath broken my bones. He hath builded against me and compassed against me with gall and travail. He hath set me in dark places as they that be dead of old. He hath hedged me about, that I cannot get out. He hath made my chain heavy. Also when I cry and shout, he shutteth out my prayer. He hath enclosed my ways with hewn stone, and hath made my paths crooked. He has unto me as a bear lying in wait, and as a lion in secret places. He hath turned aside my ways, and pulled me in pieces. He hath made me desolate. He hath bent his bow, and he has set me in the mark for the arrow. He hath caused the arrows of his quiver to enter into my reins. I was a derision to all my people, and their song all the day. He hath filled me with bitterness, and he hath made me drunken with wormwood. With wormwood. He hath broken my teeth and gavel stones. He hath covered me with ashes. And thou hast removed my soul far off from peace. I forgot prosperity. And I said, My strength and my hope is perished from the Lord. Remembering my affliction and my misery, the wormwood and the gall. My soul hath them still in remembrance and is humbled in me. This I recall 
to my mind, therefore I have hope. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed, because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, saith my soul, therefore will I hope in him. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him, to the soul that seeketh him. It is good that a man should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. It is good for a man that he bear the yoke in his youth. He sitteth alone and keepeth silence, because he hath borne it upon him. He putteth his mouth in the dust, if so be there may be hope. He giveth his cheek to him that smiteth me, or smiteth him. He is filled full with reproach. For the Lord will not cast off for ever. But though he cause grief, yet will he have compassion according to the multitude of his mercies. For he doth not afflict willingly, nor grieve the children of men. To crush under his feet all the prisoners of the earth. To turn aside the right of man before the face of the Most High. To subvert a man in his cause, the Lord approveth not. Who is he that saith, and it cometh to pass, when the Lord commandeth it not? Out of the mouth of the Most High proceedeth not evil and good? Wherefore doth a living man complain, and a man for the punishment of his sins? Let us search and try our ways, and turn again to the Lord. Let us lift up our heart and our hands unto God in the heavens. We have transgressed and have rebelled. Thou hast not pardoned. Thou hast covered with anger and persecuted us. Thou hast slain. Thou hast not pitied. Thou hast covered thyself with a cloud that our prayer should not pass through. That's so funny. Cloud, get it? And they, and they are, no, never mind. Thou hast made us as an offscouring and refuse in the midst of the people. All our enemies have opened their mouths against us. Fear and a snare is come upon us. Desolation and destruction. My eyes runneth down with rivers of water for the destruction of the daughter of my people. Mine eye trickle down and ceaseth not without any intermission. Till the Lord look down and behold from heaven, mine eye afflicteth my heart because of all the daughters of my city. Mine enemies chase me sore like a bird without cause. They have cut off my life in the dungeon and cast a stone upon me. Waters flowed over mine head. Then I said, I am cut off. I called upon thy name, O Lord, out of the low dungeon. Thou hast heard my voice, hide not thine ear at my breathing, at my cry. Thou drewest near in the day that I called upon thee. Thou saidest, Fear not. O Lord, hast thou pleaded the causes of my soul? Thou hast redeemed my life. O Lord, thou hast seen my wrong, judge thou my cause. Thou hast seen all their vengeance and all their imaginations against me. Thou hast heard their reproach, O Lord, and all their imaginations against me. The lips of those that rose up against me and their device against me all the day. Behold, they're sitting down, they're rising up. I am their music. Render unto them a recompense, O Lord, according to the work of their hands. Give them sorrow of heart, they curse thy curse unto them. Persecute and destroy them in anger from under the heavens of the Lord. How is the gold become dim? <laughs> How is the most fine gold changed? The stones of the sanctuary are poured out in the top of every street.
precious sons of Zion comparable to fine gold? How are they esteemed as the earthen pitchers, the work of the hands of the potter? Even the sea monsters draw out the breast. They give suck to their young ones. The daughter of my people has become cruel like ostriches in the wilderness. The tongue of the suckling child cleaveth to the roof of his mouth for thirst. The young children ask bread, and no man breaketh it unto them. They that did feed delicately were des are desolate in the streets. They that were brought up in scarlet embraced dung hills. For the punishment of thine iniquity of the daughter of my people is greater than the punishment of the sin of Sodom. That was overthrown as in a moment, and no hands stayed upon her, or on her, as in a moment. Her Nazarites were purer than snow, they were whiter than milk, they were more ruddy in body than rubies, their polishing was of sapphire. Their visage is blacker than coal, and they are not known in the streets, their skin cleaveth to their bones, it is withered, it is become like a stick. They that be slain with the sword are better than they that be slain with the hunger. For these pine away, stricken through for want of the fruits of the field. The hands of the pitiful women have sodden their own children. They were their meat in the destruction of the daughter of my people. The Lord hath accomplished his fury. He hath poured out his fierce anger, and hath kindled a fire in Zion, and it hath devoured the foundations thereof. The kings of the earth and all the inhabitants of the world would not have believed that the adversary of, thine, of the enemy would have entered into the gates of Jerusalem. For the sins of her prophets and the iniquities of her priests, they have shed blood of the just in the midst of her. They have wandered as blind men in the streets, and they have polluted themselves with blood, so that men could not touch their garments. They cried unto them, Depart ye, it is unclean, depart, depart, touch not. When they fled away and wandered, they said among the heathen, They shall no more sojourn there. The anger of the Lord hath divided them, he will no more regard them. They respected not the persons of the priests, they favored not the elders. As for us, our eyes as yet failed to our vain, our vain help. In our watching we have watched for a nation that could not save us. They hunt our steps that we cannot go in our streets. Our end is near. Our days are fulfilled, for our end is come. Our persecutors are swifter than the eagles of the heaven. They pursued us upon the mountains. They laid wait for us in the wilderness. The breath of our nostrils, the anointed of the Lord, was taken into the pits, of whom we said, Under his shadow we shall live among the heathen. Rejoice and be glad, O daughter of Edom, that dwelleth in the land of Uz, the cup also shall pass through unto thee. Thou shalt be drunken, and shalt make thyself naked. The punishment of thine iniquity is accomplished. O daughter of Zion, he will no more carry thee away into captivity. He will visit thine iniquity. O daughter of Edom, he will discover thy sins. Remember, O Lord, what has come upon us. Consider and behold our reproach. Our inheritance is turned to strangers, our houses to aliens. We are orphaned and fatherless, our mothers are as widows. We have drunken our water for money, our wood is sold unto us. <laughs> our necks are under persecution, we labor and have no rest. We have given the hand to the Egyptians and to the Assyrians to be satisfied with bread. Our fathers have sinned and are not, and we have borne their iniquities. 
servants have ruled over us. There is none that doth deliver us out of their hand. We got our bread with the pearl of our lives, because the sword of the wilderness. Our skin was black like an oven, because of the terrible famine. They ravaged the women in Zion, and the maids in the city of Judah. Princes are hanged up by their hand, the faces of the elders were not honored. They took the young men to grind, and the children fell under the wood. The elders have ceased from the gate, the young men from their music. The joy of our heart is ceased, our dance is turned into mourning. The crown has fallen from our head, woe unto us that we have sinned. For this our heart is faint, for these things our eyes are dim. Because of the mountain of Zion, which is desolate, the foxes walk upon it. Thou, O Lord, remainest forever thy throne from generation to generation. Wherefore dost, dost thou forget us forever, and forsake us for so long a time? <clears throat> Excuse me, the throat's getting dry. Turn thou <clears throat> us unto thee, O Lord and we shall be turned, renew our days as of old. But thou hast utterly rejected us, thou art very wroth against us. And I'm not supposed to go to Ezekiel, but while we uh, are here, we will go ahead and um, Put the uh, well. If I figure out what I'm doing here, there was another reading that was supposed to go with this. It was a psalm. Oh, see, I, I was trying to figure this out earlier, and I did eventually figure it out. But uh, Shucky doll. Oh, there it is. It's up here at the top. Sorry for the delay, folks. Alright, so we got to go to Psalms. And the same time I was given that in prayer as an answer to my prayer of confirmation. Um, and, and also, if you don't know what Wormwood is, look it up in the dictionary what the def actual definition of wormwood is and um, then uh, piece it together also make note of the descriptions now I know that was a recounting of supposed the fall of Jerusalem in the past but if you read it closely and see how it's described and what is described and think has that actually ever happened in Jerusalem's past obviously not or it wouldn't still be standing there right so and even if you don't believe it's actually a reference to a future event and I uh, obviously a very soon future event the way things are going not only just in the world but I mean besides the fact of all the confirmations and what has been disclosed to us um, through like Johnny Clicks Revelations and other people's. So anyway, I was supposed to read which one. Let me find the actual number. I got a drop down menu up here. You can't see it, it's off the screen right now. But it was supposed to be one forty six. So this is what I was given with the Lamentations to read, was these three, and actually they're kind of like the three I read before. Um, I could carry them all the way through, actually. They would be pertinent, uh, apply, applicable, 
um, from where I left off at 139 to I told you to read 139 um, one if you keep going 140 all the way to 149 148 149 uh, it's all talking about the same thing so but um, here 146 we'll read it praise ye the Lord praise the Lord O my soul while I live will I praise the Lord I will sing praises unto my God while I have any being put not your trust in princes nor in the Son of Man in whom there is no help his breath goeth forth he returneth to his earth and in that very day his thoughts perish happy is he that hath the God of Jacob for his help whose hope is in the Lord his God which made heaven and earth the sea and all therein is which keepeth truth forever which executeth judgment for the oppressed which giveth food to the hungry the Lord looseth, looseth the prisoners he, he sets the prisoners free in other words and the Lord openeth the eyes of the blind the Lord raiseth them that are bowed down and the Lord loveth the righteous the Lord preserveth preserveth the strangers he relieveth the fatherless and widow but the way of the wicked he turneth upside down the Lord shall reign forever even thy God O Zion unto all generations praise ye the Lord Praise ye the Lord, for it is good to sing praises unto our God, for it is pleasant, and praises is and praise is comely. The Lord doth build up Jerusalem. He gathered together gathereth together the outcasts of Israel. He healeth the broken in heart, and bindeth up their wounds. He telleth the number of the stars, he calleth them all by their names. Great is our Lord, and of the great power, his understanding is infinite. The Lord lifteth up the meek, he casteth down the wicked down to the ground. Sing unto the Lord with thanksgiving, sing praise upon the harp unto our God. Who covereth the heaven with clouds, who prepareth rain for the earth, who maketh grass grow upon the mountains. He giveth to the beasts his food, and to the young ravens which cry. He delighteth not in the strength of the horse, he taketh not pleasure in the legs of a man. The Lord taketh pleasure in them that fear him, in those that hope in his mercy. Praise the Lord, O Jerusalem, praise thy God, O Zion. For he hath strengthened the bars of thy gates, he hath blessed thy children within thee, he maketh peace in thy borders, and filled thee with the finest of wheat. He sendeth forth his commandment upon the earth, his word runneth very swiftly. He giveth snow like wool, he scattereth the hoarfrost like ashes. He casteth forth his ice like morsels, who can stand before his cold. He sendeth out his word, and melteth them. He causeth his wind to blow, and the waters flow. He sheweth his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. Statutes, not statutes. <laughs> and uh, he hath not dealt with so many with any nation, and as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye, O the Lord. Praise ye, the Lord. He hath not dealt so with any nation. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. 148. Praise ye, the Lord. Praise ye, the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him, praise ye him, all his angels, praise ye him, all his hosts. Praise ye him, sun, moon, praise him, all ye stars of light. Praise him, ye heavens of heavens, and ye waters that be above the heavens. 
Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded, and they were created. He hath also established them, for ever and ever he hath made a decree which shall not pass. Praise the Lord from the earth, ye dragons and all deeps. Fire and hail, snow and vapor, stormy wind, fulfilling his word. Okay, do you understand what just happened? <laughs> I'm going to repeat it for you. Praise the Lord from the earth, ye dragons and all deeps. Fire and hail, snow and vapor, stormy wind, fulfilling his word. Mountains and all hills, fruitful trees and all cedars. Beasts and all cattle, creeping things and flying fowl, kings of the earth and all people, princes and all judges of the earth, both young men and maidens, old men and children, let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is excellent, his glory is above the earth and heaven. He also exalted the horn of his people, and the praise of all his saints, even of the children of Israel. A people near un dear unto him, near unto him, praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord, sing unto the Lord a new song, and his praise in the congregation of saints. Let Israel rejoice in him that made him. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Let them praise his name in the dance. Let them sing praises unto him with the timbrel and the harp. For the Lord taketh pleasure in his people, and he will beautifully, or beautify the meek with salvation. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth, and a two-edged sword in their hand, to execute vengeance upon the heathen, and punishments upon the people to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron, to execute upon them the judgment written, his honor have all his saints. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary and praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise Him for His mighty acts. Praise Him according to His excellent greatness. Praise Him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise Him with the psaltery and harp. Praise Him with the timbrel and dance. And praise Him with stringed instruments and organs. Praise Him upon the loud cymbals. And praise Him upon the loud, high sounding cymbals. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. And that would be the end of that message for you all. And that would cut the first message basically for the sinners, <laughs> Lamentations. Second message basically for those there that are um, still with the Lord. And they, you know, the wheats and the tares mixed together in the same place. When the judgment comes, you you have to get you know keep your place, and this goes the same for here. This message was directed towards, you know, obviously Israel and Jerusalem. Goes on. Um, let me. Was I going to add something else? Um, I think that was it for this reading. Um. Yeah. So that's what I was given to read here a couple of weeks ago when I was praying regarding the events seen in the uh, Olympic ceremonies, deciphering, and other pictures and messages that people have gotten, and, and other signs of the times. Um, so, I don't know, with that, I reckon we'll... Uh, we got the pentagram poster, sacred pentagram, new. Now this is a decent sight. 
um, totally unrelated to the reading we just had. So it was just having to be open. So with that, I thank you for joining me. I hope you understood the message within that. Uh, it is actually a confirmation of all the visions that people have been given um, in presence. And, you know, read it for yourself and understand what it's actually describing, um, what's actually going to happen. And uh, it'll, you know, um, yeah, America is also targeted, but um, apparently so is other places. So, I, I, you know, that's it. I'm not, I'm not going to say anymore. All right. Lord bless you all.